we recently visited a couple of Cedar Fair Parks, now Six Flags Parks, with the dining plan and did not go hungry at Cedar Point. Hey folks, welcome to the Down the Road Travel Channel. My name is Will Van Winkle. When we were planning our 2024 summer vacation, we were looking for something that would appeal to the teens, but not cost us an arm and a leg. So we purchased the Golden Pass from Kings Island, added the All Parks Pass dining plan and drink plan as well, so we can eat and drink for free all season long. And they've already paid for themselves. While we found some okay stuff as well, some complete duds, at Kings Island, Cedar Point proved to be a bit different. Even though it seemed there were fewer restaurants that accepted the dining plan at Cedar Point, the food was surprisingly better. I thought being owned by, you know, Cedar Fair Group falling under the same flag, many of the attractions are the same. I really expected the same options for restaurants. And, you know, one or two places were the same. I mean, you're going to find standard... Um, amusement park fare at every amusement park burgers chicken tenders maybe even hot dogs things like that there were also some chains within the park like starbucks panda express which i guess is good to have the familiar faces in case you have somebody who isn't really excited to try new things but let's face it it's a theme park you know as i said you're going to find those same old standards the chicken strips the pizza the burgers um and this existed here at cedar point as well but since we're speaking of burgers, we're going to bring us to our first stop, and that was the Coaster Diner, offering live entertainment outside, weather permitting. Uh, and it's a throwback to old-time diners that popped up across the country in the 80s and 90s that were trying to pay homage, I guess, to 50s diners. This one just had a wor much, much worse staff. These folks had no idea what they were doing. Uh, they ran out of burgers multiple times while we were there. They ran out of condiments, but when it was pointed out, they got really huffy, um, I guess would be the best word. But, I mean, if you can't keep the food on the shelf because you're not making it at the right intervals, expect people to start being upset with you, you know? Um, they actually argued with us that the ketchup container was empty, uh, so, you know... But then we noticed that they were getting off work, so it was the middle of shift change. Um, so they just didn't want to do their work. I have no idea how the burgers were because, you guessed it, they ran out when I ordered. And they said it'd be about a 10-minute wait. So I decided I was going to wait. After about 15 minutes, I decided to switch my order to a chicken sandwich, which, to be honest, was served after its hold time expired. If you've ever worked fast food, you know how a chicken breast looks when it should be thrown out. Uh, and I recognized the sign. It probably wouldn't have been much better had it been fresh, but the only condiment available for this dry piece of rubber was ranch dressing. That was outside. In the sun. I'm sure most of you see the potential problem here. It was fine. No one got sick. But again, they ran out of everything and they were unwilling to refill things because it was shift change. They were getting off and they didn't want to do anything. And I understand that. I was a teenager working in fast food for a while and I probably was the same way I don't know the only upside to this place was the indoor seating uh, the tables were in poor repair and of course they were dirty oddly enough and I can't understand the logic behind this both parks we visited there were people running around and sweeping up around the tables like every few minutes like absurdly frequently but absolutely nobody was cleaning tables. And it's not like every table was occupied all the time, so I can't quite figure out the logic here. They're making sure the ground is clean uh, on an outdoor venue, but they're not keeping the tables where people are sitting at all clean. No, I don't know, I don't get it, but I don't have to. After like the third meal, the meal plan had paid for itself and we were eating free by this point, so whatever you know our next point at cedar point or our next stop at cedar point rather was back bq get it bbq this place wasn't bad now in fact we ate here two times both times i had the brisket now i didn't expect the bis brisket to be cooked right and of course it wasn't but it wasn't bad uh, they seemed to offer different chicken items on different days one day it was wings in a look like buffalo sauce the next time we were there it was drumsticks so 
their, their chicken option seems to change from day to day. Brisket seems to always be there. Now, the only reason I say it's not cooked right, I'm from Texas. And obviously they are cooking this quick, they're steaming, they're doing whatever they're doing to get it out quick and really for brisket you need probably a good 8 to 12 hours, I mean depending on the size of it, and they just don't have that luxury of time. So obviously it's not going to be cooked right, the fat's not going to render as well, so you're going to have fatty pieces, but the flavor was there and the flavor worked and that was fine. There's no bark on it, but again it tasted okay. About the only thing that didn't go over well here was the pulled pork. It seemed like it was a little dry. Uh, the sides were pretty good as well. Mac and cheese got decent reviews. The cornbread was great. Just sweet enough, although a nice bit of butter melting into the bread would have made it awesome. It's still good even without them. I also had the coleslaw, which looks a little weird, a little red, but I'm guessing that was from the red cabbage in the mix because it tasted fine. If we go back, this one stays on our list. It's decent for theme park food. Hugo's Italian Kitchen. Now, this is closer to the front entrance and Blue Streak, the oldest roller coaster in the park. Uh, I bet you already know what you can find here. Yep, pizza. They also have a pasta dish daily. Now, that changes from day to day. I had the pasta and a creamy Alfredo-ish sauce that left me regretting my decision for a few hours. The breadsticks weren't bad, and the pizza was, well, I mean, a theme park pizza. Not bad, not great, but edible. Hugo's kind of had a similar quality to, say, Fazoli's, if there's one of those around you, or a step or two down from, say, Olive Garden. So we're looking at a low bar here. It was okay. Their size include breadsticks, Caesar salad, or an antipasto salad. Uh, it's another place with indoor seating, which is a rarity in Cedar Point. And it had calmer and quieter restrooms. We did not snack much at Cedar Point or Kings Island, but did find funnel cake fries at Kings Island. The sand was closed for the entire time we were there. So when we found them at Cedar Point, we grabbed some. I'll say they were pretty good. Exactly what you would expect for a funnel cake. A little bit better than, say, fair uh, funnel cakes. But, I mean, it's funnel cake. There's not really a whole lot you can do with it. It's, it's either going to be okay. It's, it's either going to be good or bad. There's no in-between with this stuff. Uh, we also hit up a candy store on the main strip along the Sky Ride. I didn't see a name because it was a store and not a dining experience. So I wasn't really paying much attention. But I grabbed a couple of caramel apples. That, those didn't disappoint either. They, they also sell fudge, popcorn, and different candies. You just have to keep an eye open for it on the um, right walking away from the main entrance along the sky ride. It's pretty easy to find. It's the one with the candy in it. We also found burrito bowls at the smokehouse. They were not stingy with the cheese at all. You choose your base, either romaine lettuce, which is weird because lettuce is also a topping, chips, or I think the third option was rice. We all got chips. I had the ground beef. I believe Dana had the chicken and nobody was mad at it. And the queso, which costs like $2 extra, is actually pretty decent. Again, indoor seating here, as well as a themed dining room. The star of Cedar Point was the farmhouse. Located over by Maverick Roller Coaster, this place is awesome. I didn't expect it at a theme park, and honestly would eat here if it wasn't in the park. And now again, we ate here two times. The first time I had the pot pie, which doesn't have a crust, but I just crumbled the biscuit over it, and it was great. Dana and her son had the chili. I tried it. wasn't bad. Thankfully, it wasn't Skyline chili. Again, apologies to the people of Cincinnati. If you're, under, if you're not understanding what I'm talking about, go watch the King Island, King's Island Eats video, and you'll understand. The chicken legs were good, especially with the barbecue sauce on them. And the Brussels sprouts were well-cooked and flavored. They had these smashed red potatoes that were somewhere between boiled and fried. Probably both, I think. It was basically a whole small potato. I think it was boiled and then fried somehow. Uh, it had a crispy outer shell and it was very soft on the inside. And it's really hard to describe. If you've ever had those, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you've never had them, give them a shot. They're, they're not bad. Looking at reviews on the Cedar Point Food Facebook page, 
The farmhouse was overwhelmingly referred to as the best in the park, and it was very, very easy to see why. Backbeat Barbecue has a stage off to the side where outdoor seating is offered, and there is a full band that plays there. Um, there's a small stage between the farmhouse and Maverick where an acoustic performer can be found as part of the Artists in Residence live music program at Cedar um, Point. There's one other place that you can see live music, and I think that's over in the Frontier area close to the Smokehouse. Um, if you don't have a dining plan and want to venture out of the park, you can find Perkins at the... Breakers Hotel, TGI Fridays, also at the Breakers Hotel, near the Marina, Famous Dave's, which if I remember correctly is barbecue. It's been a long time since I've been to one, so I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it's either barbecue or pizza, but I'm, I'm almost positive it's barbecue. If you know, let me know in the comments below. I also heard there was a Dairy Queen somewhere on site. Did not see that. There's, there's plenty of dining options. A Lighthouse Point has no dining options itself. Just another thing missing from an on-site campground associated with the park. So if you're staying there and subject to late night cravings or want a good breakfast before hitting the park, be sure to stock your fridge. All in all, the food at Cedar Point wasn't too bad. The, the worst being Coaster's Diner and more because of the staff than the food. Although I'm not sure because I didn't really get to eat what I wanted and what I had was served when it shouldn't have been served. Again, a staff issue. If I missed your favorite or even your least favorite, let me know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe, comment, like, even share this video. Check out our online store. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you down the road. Let's hit the road.